Euromax Highlights. And here's your host, Louise Houghton. Hello and welcome to Euromax Highlights from our studio in Berlin. Coming up today... Digital fun, how board games are making their way onto tablet PCs. Sweet treats, how a German artist creates chocolate sculptures. Winter Wonderland, we give you the lowdown on the Swiss resort of Lax. But first up, we have a way of standing out in the crowd whilst at the same time being totally anonymous. And to demonstrate what I'm talking about is my colleague Lucas. He's wearing what's come to be known as a morph suit and nicely modelling the tuxedo version in an attempt to be sophisticated. There are, of course, many versions of these morph suits and we went to meet the trio from Scotland who came up with the idea. <laughs> Eye-catching, skin-tight and elastic. Morph suits cover the wearer's entire body. They were invented by three friends from Scotland. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm Gregor. And I'm Fraser. And we, we run, run Morph suits. suits. The spandex suits are so thin that the wearer can move about unhindered and see out through the fabric. The special kick about uh, using morph suits is that no one can see you, but you can see through them and you can breathe through them. So this sort of brings out a more adventurous side of your personality, so you do stuff that you wouldn't normally do. At Morph Suits, we believe that life is more fun in colour. The inventors enjoy wearing the suits themselves. They say it makes life on the streets more interesting and brightens up their daily routine. it's easy to make new friends in the suits. They transform ordinary people into stars. Co-inventor Fraser Smeaton says that's just what inspired him and his colleagues. As you can see, when you wear one of these morph suits, people treat you like a celebrity. So we were out on a boys' weekend in Dublin and people were wearing similar suits. And we saw the reaction, people taking photos for you, people buying drinks for you. So we thought, if, if, you, if one person can have that, we should get, take that idea and, and bring it to the world. So that's how we got the idea to start the business. The three young men run the business from an apartment in Edinburgh. The morph suits are manufactured in China and sold predominantly over the internet via the site morphsuit.com. The three friends founded the company in 2009 but held on to their day jobs as marketing consultants and bankers. Their idea has been so successful that today they all work exclusively for the brand and regularly launch new designs. We've got hundreds and hundreds of designs. I'll just show, share three more. Another is the ninja. I think because it's figure-hugging, people just love the thought of being like stealthy like a ninja and as you can see, the design and detail that we have on this suit is really fantastic. One that we're just launching, especially for Carnival, is the Harlequin, where you see we've got the great check design and the, the green and purple there. And lastly, one of the most popular times for morph suits is Halloween. And for Halloween, we have the skeleton where you have the bone arms and then the scary face, which I'll just put on as you can see. The average morph suit costs 45 euros. The company has already sold more than 400,000 suits worldwide. In 2011, the business registered sales worth 12 million euros, and the three co founders were jointly named Entrepreneur of the Year in their home country of Scotland. Wearing morph suits has now become a global trend. Videos of wearers getting up to all sorts of antics crop up on the internet sites Facebook and YouTube almost every day. The co-founders encourage fans by holding competitions for the best videos. The winners get a free morph suit. 
they certainly are more crazy than I am. Uh, whenever we think we've done the coolest thing and made a very funny video ourselves, etc., we just talk to our Facebook fans and then they'll send us 10 videos that are better than anything we've ever come up with. We've had people flying planes in morph suits, we've had people visiting penguin colonies in Bungie Antarctica. Jumping. Yeah, bungee jumping. Amazing uh, stunts on BMX bikes. Break dancing crews. So yeah, if you take our millions of fans, they are definitely crazier than we are. Once or twice a month, the three Scottish co-founders enjoy a night on the town. Of course, wearing their morph suits. You can even enjoy your beer through the polyester fabric. The current record for downing half a litre through the material is just 6.3 seconds. We've been seeing them a couple of times in the streets and uh, they are uh, funny. <laughs> these are all these colours and we are. I'm actually wondering what, the, what is this suit for? Oh, I thought they were interesting as they walked into the room, but I don't think I'd wear one because they're very, very tight. But I have high respect that they actually have the confidence to wear it. The motto behind Morph Suits is be seen, stay incognito, and above all, have a great time. Now, here in Berlin, we are experiencing some snowy weather at the moment, which just makes me think of the ideal Christmas holiday. In fact, many businesses are already preparing for the festivities 11 months in advance by visiting the Christmas World exhibition in Frankfurt, which is currently showing all of the latest trends for 2012. It may be January, but the mood is festive at Christmas World, where nearly a thousand exhibitors are presenting Italian nativity scenes, tree ornaments decked in studs and fur, wooden angels and sparkling snowmen. For the past 12 years, Annetta Parmesano has scouted upcoming trends at the Christmas World Trade Fair. We draw a great deal of inspiration from fashion, so that means we check out what's hot in fashion right now, what's new in architecture. All of the international trends in art, culture, fashion and architecture, we gather them together and that's where we come up with the trends. The final result is festive and very colorful. This tree was created by an exclusive fashion designer. Jean-Paul Gaultier made the one-off piece using green silk thread. It looks like a Christmas tree, but review, like if it is a... You can see him move me, moving and imaginating him dancing, you know, like Charleston. So it's a Charleston dress for the Christmas tree. So I was, I was thinking that is like a couture, let's say, a dress for the Christmas tree. Christmas decorations this upcoming season will feature imitation food and animals. Annetta Parmesano has dubbed it the fancy folk style. For the past few years, we've been seeing a strong trend toward the emotional, the handcrafted and the traditional. It's been going on for several seasons now. This year, for example, we saw these natural themes and strong colors. That's also why we're calling it an electrified romanticism. Martina Lammel is also a longtime fan of snow. A few years ago, she took over the job of decorating a restaurant for Christmas. The restaurant was in a ski resort, and I wanted to make something out of snow, but I couldn't find any artificial snow that I liked. Her snow is made out of a special silicon. It'll go on sale this year. It can be kneaded like clay and formed into any shape that's desired, like a snowball. Once it hardens, it can even be used as a flower vase. Snowflakes are everywhere at Christmas World, often featured on transparent ornaments and in the color white. But will the decorations seen here end up as best sellers in the shops? Will the new nudge out the old? 
A trend is never something completely new. It's always a continuation. It's always something that adds to what we had before. A combination of old and new. And for the rest of us who can't decide between bright colors or white, plants or animals, and tradition or modern, we'll still have a way to go before it's once again time to wish us a happy Christmas. And of course, if you have children, toys are always top of their Christmas list. Nobody knows that better than the people at the International Toy Fair in Nuremberg, which is, in fact, the world's largest fair for toys and games. 2,600 companies from 64 countries are exhibiting, and we caught up with Germany's most successful board game creator to see how his games have been given a new lease of life for the tablet PC. The pile of board games on this shelf could soon be consigned to the annals of history. More and more people are shunning them in favour of games they can play on their tablet PCs. But what happens when board games become fair game for the computer world? Doesn't the social aspect of playing them get lost? Klaus Teuber is one of Germany's most successful game inventors, and his Settlers of Catan has been translated into 50 languages. Teuber usually makes board games, but he's also open to games on tablet PCs. Sometimes people who like playing board games don't have anyone to play with, due to reasons of time or location. It's nice to be able to play your favorite board game on your PC at times like that. The best-known board games, like Monopoly and Carcassonne, have already been adapted for use on tablet PCs and smartphones. Since last year, the number of board games available has multiplied. It's a lucrative business. As with all his games, Klaus Teuber did a lot of research while developing the Settlers of Catan. The game transports players back to the Middle Ages, where they must compete to acquire resources. Games like this, which emphasize strategy rather than luck, are known as German-style games, because the first ones were developed in Germany. Increasingly, they're now being adapted for tablet PCs and smartphones. First, I have to consider how my game works, how you play it well, and at what time playing ability becomes crucial. That was all new territory, but very interesting new territory. To give the programmers something to go on, Teuber had to write a detailed concept containing concrete instructions about the precise functions of the characters and the playing cards. Companies like Exocet in Berlin then adapt the concept into computer programming language. Matthias Helmund is project leader for the Settlers of Catan. The author of the board game gives us a good starting point for our electronic adaptation. Our task consists of implementing the author's concept in a manner that's worthy of the medium. And we have to create a game world around that, a story, and a graphic representation on the mobile device. It can take up to a year to adapt a complex board game for use on tablet PCs. The adaptation is supposed to resemble the original as closely as possible. Just like with the real thing, players throw dice, but it's all computer simulated. The characters can be moved around the board by touchscreen, and the design also allows you to play with other people. Of course, you can use the mobile device to play alone, but tablet PCs allow several people to play together, so board games are quite appropriate. There's just one downside. Players can't see what's going on when it's not their turn. But Matthias Helmund still thinks board games for tablet PCs are the way forward. He says you can even generate virtual co-players. One interesting aspect is the online multiplayer function, which many games now support. It means that in addition to playing with people nearby, you can play against people all over the world. 
Teuber has become a fan of the digital world. He regularly uses the internet to keep in contact with his programming colleagues. But for him, tablet PC versions are an enrichment rather than a replacement for traditional games. Teuber himself prefers the traditional version. He's testing his latest game with his son and workmate, Benjamin. My heart belongs to board games, the tactile experience of the board and the interaction with other players. That's why I don't want to concentrate exclusively on electronic versions. Having fun is still the main thing. The idea behind board games has always been to spend time with your friends. And now that's also possible with a tablet PC. Now, if you like candy, this form of edible art coming up next might tantalise your taste buds. Berlin artist Sonja Alhäuser favours materials like chocolate, sugar and marzipan for her sought-after sculpture work. And the finished products really are good enough to eat. Watch Sonja Alhäuser at work and you will be surrounded by the sweet aroma of chocolate. Alhäuser always has at least 400 kilograms of chocolate stored away in her Berlin studio. Here she's turning milk chocolate into the head of a large sculpture. Depending on the type of chocolate, sometimes I just tuck in and taste it. You just can't say no because it still smells wonderful, even after 10 years of working with it. It's very different from real plaster. What started out as a large mass of chocolate suddenly resembles a face. The artist has to work fast. The consistency of the chocolate changes as the seconds and minutes tick by. Right now I can shape the hair, but that's only possible for about one or two minutes, because then the chocolate solidifies. That's what I find so fascinating about it. You only have a certain amount of time to do the work. So it's also about speed, about response time. You have to really hurry to get it done. This is where the artist stores some of her smaller examples of Schonko art, in the freezer. But the large sculptures are always created on site, like this horse from 1997, her first sweet sculpture. Since then, she's exhibited her works in museums the world over. All of her works of art eventually meet the same fate. They're eaten by visitors. I use food as material for my sculptures because I'm interested in the ephemeral. If you think about food having a sell-by date and then look at our own lifespans, there are definite parallels. I'm interested in teasing out that element and then making it accessible for consumption. We can admire it and exhibit it, but afterwards we eat it. Her work is imbued with sensuality. At a museum performance in Brazil last December, she took her concept to its extreme. A man submerged himself in molten chocolate that enveloped him like a second skin. The chocolate man was so euphoric. He was just surrounded by this aphrodisiac. He said he felt quite intoxicated by it. Sonia has also tried bathing in chocolate, but without an audience. It's very sensual. But after a while, it's also a bit frightening. You can't just get rid of it. You can't just step under the shower and wash it off. It's hard to remove because it's very greasy.
In Sonia's creations, everything is edible, even the dishes. These delicate plates and goblets are made of caramelized sugar, part of a banquet that is a work of art in its own right. Her next edible feast will be presented at a Chicago museum this spring. On an enormous piece of paper, she first sketches out all the delicacies that she'll create to tempt her audience. Based on this design, she now casts hundreds of sculptures out of chocolate, or shapes them out of a delicate marzipan. I'll nibble away at one of my favorite figures, or I'll choose two or three of them, which has an entirely different meaning. It's also a game, a game of the sexes, and of seduction and nibbling away at them. After the feast, only the sketch remains in the museum. You see? A sweet temptation that even the artist finds hard to resist. And what better way to work off those calories than on the slopes? For many snowboarders and freestyle skiers, the resort of Lax in the Swiss Alps is a very popular destination. This is because it offers sports enthusiasts the chance to practice in the safety of an indoor training hall. No, these aren't skateboarders. They are, in fact, winter sports enthusiasts in a rather unique hall, featuring the Big Air Ski Jump. The Freestyle Academy opened here in Lax a year ago and is open to the public. Andri Ambu from the Swiss town of Kua finds the hall a handy alternative to outdoor training. His dream is to compete in the famous Winter X Games in the U.S., the annual event for the growing global community of freestyle skiers. He practices in the safe surroundings of the Big Air. The biggest advantage of the big air is that you can practice a new trick to see how it's going to feel in the air later when you're outside on the snow. With this jump, you always enjoy a soft landing. Lax caters to fans of winter action sports. It's home to the biggest half pipe in Europe. There are four snow parks with a plethora of obstacles to navigate. The takeoff ramps are called kickers. It's ideal terrain for young freestylers looking for a more adventurous, if not acrobatic way of whizzing down the slopes. Apre ski here in Lax is also tailored to the preferences of snowboarders and freestylers. It's my favorite in Switzerland. There are so many options, and they've built such a lot of fantastic stuff. Over there, we've got Ilse Plowns, which has kickers, and it's on the advanced side. And here we have an entire piece going to Corneas. There are various obstacles, rails and down rails and little ramps. So whatever skill level you're at, there's something here for everybody. They put a lot of effort into reshaping the piece every evening. Roger Eid is the terrain park manager in Lax. The four parks in the resort have a total of 90 obstacles so far. The people who practice here are always looking for new challenges and tricks. There's always been that urge to do acrobatic jumps and make your own individual mark. You saw it a long time ago with the skateboarders and surfers. What we're offering here, first of all, is the infrastructure that allows people to do these wild things on the snow. Back in his office, Roger plans the slopes of the future. He has a staff of 12 shapers, experts currently working on an innovative competition course. It's a step up. You jump onto these iron bars and then slide down them and off to the side. Next up are the rib pipes. You can also slide down those and jump off at the end. And this is a regular down rail. 
This kind of obstacle course is called slope style. Andri Ambul is training in Lux for the discipline, which will be making its Olympic debut at the 2014 Games in Sochi. He'll be performing jumps such as the switch left side double cork in his bid to impress the jury. You normally tend to focus your efforts on the jumps, but the rails are also important and you have to be consistent. It's always annoying when you're not so great on the rails or make a mistake. Then it's relevant how good your jumps are. You need a good performance from top to finish. After sundown, training continues indoors at the Freestyle Academy. The trampolines are useful for practicing jumps quickly and it keeps you fit. To have a chance of triumphing in freestyle sports, discipline is essential. Whether inside the hall or out on the piste, Lax in Switzerland offers amateurs ideal conditions to become world-class pros. And that is all we have time for today. Hope to see you again soon, but for now, from all of the team here, goodbye. <laughs>